We've been to four organizations in four different states, over 11,000 miles of travel, and now those organizations are here. I'm Wendy, I'm president of For the Love of the Hoof, and I'm from Arizona. And we are here to win it. Your job is to run back to that table. Just kind of went blank, like what do you need? They really look energetic. I kind of went rolling, but I got back up and kept going. This is definitely a challenge. My favorite group in Arizona. <laughs> we, we work well together. <laughs> wow. How are we even going to choose who gets the $15,000? They've had quite the journey getting here. We went to them. We chose them to be one of the mentored organizations. We'd like to take you back and show you a little bit of that journey. Arizona is known for the Grand Canyon, and it's big, it's gorgeous, and it's grand. Arizona is also known for a very interesting wildlife, like Gila monsters. And wild horses. But the sad fact is that there are horses in Arizona that are exported into Mexico for slaughter. But there's an organization that applied to be a full circle life horse shelter, and we're going to go check them out, because hopefully they can help save some of those horses so they don't end up in the slaughter pipeline. I feel like we've been in the middle of nowhere. Well, I mean, you can see I-40 over there. It's a few miles true, away, so true. it's not too bad. Hello. Hi. <laughs> we finally made it. We finally yeah. made How it. How was your drive? Good. Good. Great. <laughs> My name is Wendy Morris, and I'm the founder and president of For the Love of the Hoof. OK, so this is our round pen, and uh -huh. it's a 60 foot round nice, pen, Mustang nice. panels. We're kind of proud of that. We just got that this year. They look heavy. Are they heavy panels? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's always the best panels are the heaviest yes, panels. They are. Yep. Uh, well, that's our horse trailer right okay. there. She's an okay. oldie but a goodie. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> she hauls uh, a lot of the horses, and that's where we um, tie up the horses to groom them, okay. saddle them, things like that. So you really don't have a barn? No, or we don't have here. a barn, unfortunately. But okay. Not yet. Uh, not yet. Yes. <laughs> Every morning I wake up with a song in my heart because I get to go out and take care of my horses. I get to, and this might sound strange, go pick up their poop. I mean, that is really relaxing and enjoying to me. I get to go ahead and make sure that they're doing okay. So I take care of all the horses. Um, I t take care of them for medical and cleaning up and feeding them. I do all the bookkeeping, the social media, I do all the contracts, I find all the adopters, I screen all the adopters, and I help deliver all the horses. It's hard to get volunteers out here, <laughs> so we just basically do it ourselves. It's actually my passion and my desire, and there, I couldn't think of anything better to do. The horses is what keeps me going physically, emotionally. Um, I was uh, diagnosed with RA about 11 years ago, and the horses actually help save me. Uh, they get me up every morning, they get me going every day, and they are my life. So how many acres do you guys have here? We have 40 acres. Oh, nice. Plenty yeah. of room. Yes, plenty of room, and especially we have plenty of room to expand. Uh-huh. 
with that 40 acres, how many horses can you comfortably have at one time? 35. Okay. Nice. Yeah, that, was, that was really quick. I'm just curious, is that a county mandate or is it just you guys know from experience that somebody? No, we know for experience. Okay. Yeah. So I can't help but notice this horse trailer. Yes. Uh, is that Looks broken. One, is that one that was used for the rescue or? So my husband refurbishes and my son, they refurbish horse trailers to help our rescue out. Okay. And they both have personal jobs, but this is what they do. Um, they take horse trailers, restore them, and then all the proceeds go to help our rescue. Nice. Oh, that That's, is great. That is awesome. When we receive a trailer in here, we bring it in, we put it up on jack stands and strip all the trimming off and tires and brakes and, and all the old wood and rubber and then we sandblast it down to bare metal and then we fix any bo body work that needs to be fixed and primer it and then paint it and then we re-put all the new wood in, rubber in, tires, brakes, electrical, and new LED lights and uh, that's pretty much it. What's your water like here? Um, it's great. It's well water and it's nice and clean and it's we don't have any issues with it. It's nice. Fantastic. And is there the well on the property? No, it's about four miles into okay. town to get it. So something unique about our operation is the fact that we have to haul our water out here. We don't have a well. Uh, cost is a huge barrier on that for one. Uh, so we do haul water and it's 26 and a half miles round trip to get water at 500 gallons every time. And depending on how many horses we have here and uh, weather, hot, cold, whatever, it's going to definitely impact the amount of times that I have to go every week or daily even to get water. Wow. Yeah, we've been hauling water for 20 some odd years. Wow. So it's, okay. just, it's, it's normal easy for to you. Go normal yes. for us. This is our tack room, supplement, medication room. And then this one is our hay storage. So how many bales of hay can you put in there? We can put um, 80 bales in here. And do you go get it on a truck or like, yeah, so you have your overload? We have a big flatbed right over there. Okay. And we, uh, my husband puts it all on there and brings it over. And then my son, he unloads it for oh, me. Oh, that's nice. That <laughs> that's a nice. lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> so those are what, 120 pound bales? Yeah, yeah. Three twined alfalfa yeah. is not, not light. No, and then we have alfalfa, we have grass hay nice. for those that can't be on alfalfa, and we have um, pellets for those that can't have anything. Well, this is a nice mare motel you have here. Thank and you. And you got a couple of horses in here. Are these horses, did our grants help these yes, horses? Yes, they did. Okay. Yeah, both of these. All right. Okay, well, this is Magnetar, mm -hmm. and he came all the way from Australia. Isn't that oh, crazy? Wow. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's just amazing. It's, I mean, it's so sad that racing horses, they are so expensive that they can be imported across the world, mm -hmm. and then their racing is done, and they're dumped at auction and right. into the slaughter pipeline. It's yeah. it's really sad. Yeah, and he was so skinny and so mm. sick. Well, he yeah. looks great now. Yeah, you've done a great yeah, job. Thank you. And what about, who do we have here? And this is Brooke, and she's one of the ones that your grant just rescued okay. this past auction. It makes me happy to that the grant program that we have with the auction rescue grants enables rescues like yourself to go out and get these horses. Absolutely. Because I mean, we're doing as much as we can in Tennessee, but there's horses in the slaughter pipeline across the United States. Yes, so absolutely. It's, it's awesome to be here and seeing the horses that our grants are helping. We get pictures, but yeah. to actually see <laughs> yeah. them. It's always great in person, and we are so grateful oh. for it. Well, we're happy to help. So you got a couple pastures out here. Yes, we do. And a couple horses. Yes. How far do you guys have to go to auction? Well, it depends. We go to several auctions. Okay. They can be anywhere between two hours and four hours. Okay. It just depends which one we go to. Uh -huh. So I'd like to introduce you to Brandy. Hi. I met my mother-in-law, um, Wendy Morris. Many moons ago, um, she was doing a trail riding business and I've always had passion for horses, so I went to go um, work there and we pretty much went with it and we ran with it. Who you got here? This is Leroy. We got him with a grant from Horse Plus. He's a good boy, he's a four-year-old stud and I'll be working him and evaluating him today. Yeah, well, Brandy, we'll kind of hang back and watch you uh, do an evaluation. Let's go practice over here.
What I enjoy most is making sure that the horses have a voice, that they get to, you know, kind of tell their story, that they kind of get out there, that they find the right homes, that people care and are passionate about them. Good boy. Well, you did a great job working with him. Thank you. Yeah. I can tell he really likes you. <laughs> Down to the river. Here in this part of Arizona, it seems to be a little bit dry to me. And I understand you guys don't have a well. It'd be, what, about 35,000? Correct. Dig a well, and it might be dry. It might be, yes. So what's, what's your solution for getting water for the horses? We haul the water from town. How often do you have to do that? Probably the 1,000 to 1,500 gallons a week. Okay, and obviously that's... That's three trips. So I understand it's time to go get some water. Yes, it is. So I'd like to ride along and see right. what it's all about. Let's do it. So did they charge you guys for the water or is it a community service? They do charge us for the water. It's about a penny and a half a gallon, which is about $7.25 to fill this up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the guy that maintains it. Yep. It has a sense of humor. It says if you want water, use bright shiny quarters in good condition. If you might want water, use regular quarters. If you're gambling, let's say, if you couldn't care less, put some of the stuff that people shoving in his poor machine, then blame the machine. Like, I bet people try using washers. He says, I know the guy, he says that he finds all kinds of stuff in there. So I've never seen it where you have to put quarters in to get water for horses. This is something something new for me, but it works in their community and it seems to work well. Yeah, it's great to have, uh, you know, when to shut it off, I probably put in a little extra quarter just to fill it every drop mm -hmm. I can get. Sure. So it's as full as it can get. And it takes about 10 minutes to fill this thing up here. Okay. So we just sit and wait, huh? That's what we'll do. All right. You get used to it. <laughs> you get used uh, to it. <laughs> yeah. Tanks full, the machine shut off. I guess it's time to get back to the rescue. Right on, we'll do it. Good deal. Well, getting water is what's the most important for these animals. Right, yeah, that's, uh, without that, we wouldn't know what to do, you know. If, it's, if we couldn't get water, we wouldn't be here. Absolutely. All right, well, thanks for showing that to me. You're welcome. Thank you. Being here today has been so amazing because we're already helping this organization mm -hmm. with giving them a lot of auction rescue grants. And for me, meeting these horses that would have never been rescued if we hadn't have given them the grant just shows how important our grant programs are. They're really remote out here, though. They right. are. They are very remote, and that's, that's a concern for me. Um, well, my biggest concern is the number of horses they can actually help at any given time. So we went with them to get water. They have to haul every drop of water on this property. And the water we got today took about an hour and they literally, if they had 25 horses, would have to do that every day for those horses. And it's, that's rough, but I think they're doing a really good work That's here. really rough. And, you know, from when we're mentoring organizations and stuff in the past, they've all been, they've had the capabilities of being a lot larger. Um, I don't see that here. So that's, that's a concern for me. But at the same time, I think that you don't have to be a big organization to be a full circle of life. Being remote, the horse community is smaller here, mm -hmm. and so the need is probably not as big. So likely they could be a full circle of life yeah. horse shelter here in well, their community. We'll see how tomorrow, tomorrow goes. It's gonna be a busy day, it sounds like. Definitely.
So David and Brandy took off early this morning to drop Leroy off at the vet to get gelded. And then they went ahead and picked up two owner surrenders and they're on their way and they should be here any minute. What's the kind of the situation? Is it uh, they just can't keep the horses anymore? Or? Yeah, they have a little girl that has several palsy and she's going to um, have to have an operation. Mm. And so she won't be able to take care of them or ride them for a while. And so uh, I'd rather see them come here to me than to an auction. Yeah. So. Sounds like I hear the trailer. Yeah. Um, so we'll step over here and just watch you do your thing. Okay, great. Well, thank you. So I know this is really a sad day for you, huh? And I just want to let you know that we're going to take really good care of your horses, okay? okay. And they're not going to want for anything, and I'll make sure that you know they'll find a really super good home okay, okay. so you. i know it's really hard on you today yeah. but we'll take care of them for you okay, okay. <laughs> And as soon as they get settled in a little bit here, we'll go ahead and put them in the stalls. And they got okay. fresh shaving in there for them and everything. They have Good. cover and just want them to roll and get relaxed a little bit first. Hey, Dante. Well, great. Thank you so much for everything, well, and we will you. keep you posted. <laughs> thank you. you know, we really appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. Okay, and I hope you recover fast. Thank okay? you. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. You've, you've got this little cowgirl. I'll take good care of him. I promise okay. you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This is Cutter, our fairy. Hey, How's it going? Cutter, nice. good hey, to meet nice you guys. Nice to meet you, Cutter. Nice so, to meet yeah, you. So, yeah, we just got this guy sheet up here, and he had some cracks on the outside of his feet, but hopefully he'll be walking a little bit better now after he's been doctored up a bit. I got four horses to do today, and then I have the equine dentist vet, and I have the equine chiropractor coming. Oh, wow. I have a uh, little girl that's going to come and show you her horse. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I know uh, farrier's time is valuable, so we'll let Cutter get to, to cutting, huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You've never heard that joke before, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think they should win the $15,000. Uh, they are a, a wonderful organization. They do great work for their animals. And like I said, they find great homes for, for other horses. I think it's important to not just you know, give animals to, uh, you know, the first person that comes around, but definitely check their place out and, and make sure they're going to be a right fit for that animal. And I think they do a really great job of doing that. Cutter the farrier has been working with Brooke. She came from an auction, so it's kind of hard to say what her history was. And it was one of our auction rescue grants that allowed them to rescue her. Um, but she's not too keen on getting her feet trimmed right now. That's the struggle of, you know, getting near horses or rescues is you never really know what you're going to get. And I mean, she has a sweet attitude, but she doesn't like her feet being touched too much. Um, so we did have to work with her a bit and just get her used to people, um, used to people touching her feet and being around her. With newer horses and especially younger ones, um, I was only able to do the front feet. You kind of want to get them used to you and, and you don't want to have a traumatic experience for them, especially if they're not used to being um, shod or having their feet touched. You just want to be as, as less dramatic as you can with them, even if that means just touching the back feet, you know, and just get them used to being touched. That's all you can do with them. Poor Cutter, he puts up with me. <laughs> I keep telling him he's a saint because not, not very many um, farriers will do rescues. Um, can I watch him trot away from me and trot yes, back? Yes, you can. 
my name is Sierra Ferguson Green, and I've been a horse chiropractor for about 15 years. And I also went to shoeing school. I got a bachelor's in biology. I plan on going to vet school. And I've trained horses pretty much my whole life. I barrel race, my husband team ropes. And I actually, I ran four studs, so we actually breed, raise, and train performance horses as well. And horses are my thing through and through. So what I'm checking for when he moves is uh, I want to see if the pelvis is rotated, if he's not moving correctly, and I also want to see if there's any like huge lameness, you know, you need to go get x-rays or something right now. So definitely has his pelvis out, so I saw that, but uh, we'll check everything else out here. Okay, so just checking him out first. He's got six withers out, four ribs out, and three lumbar out. And then I'm gonna go through and check everything, let you know everything that's out first before I start adjusting him. Easy, buddy. So when I check the pelvis, his back legs have to be squared up, pretty decent, so that I can tell which side's high. Well, I mean, I think uh, most people have probably used a chiropractor. And how'd you feel before you went to that chiropractor and how'd you feel after? And an important thing to keep in mind with horses is they're carrying us. So they're also carrying our misalignment. So, I mean, if you're really one-sided or you have a one leg that's shorter than the other and you're compensating, you're sitting crooked on that horse and you're, that horse is gonna have to compensate and it's gonna get everything messed up. So, I mean, they're not only carrying us, they're also carrying saddles that got stuff strapped to them. And I mean, we're asking them to do all sorts of stuff that isn't really natural. Um, even if you know you have them collected all the time and, and all of that, you want them aligned because you want them using everything correctly and evenly. Otherwise, they're just gonna get messed up worse until they act out and then it's the horse's fault when it's not. So while I'm checking back here, um, I wanna see if his pelvis is even. I'm looking at the top of the tubersacral joint on the pelvis. And so his pelvis is actually rotated down on his left. And then when I reach in the front of the pelvis on the tubercoxae for pronation, he's actually pronated a little bit forward on the right. So down to the left, pronated on the right. So then I go and check the femurs. That right femur is out pretty good. And the left one, maybe just a hair. Get this femur over here. So this will start out sore and then you'll watch him kind of visibly relax and then we'll get that completely released and it shouldn't be sore anymore. So what happens, because his pelvis was down on the other side, he was putting more weight on this side. So he was making this side really, really sore by overloading it. Because these muscles have been working overtime, they're really tight and they hurt. So with me pushing on them like this, and I'm pushing pretty hard just because he was that sore, Still bothering him enough. So I'll double check fixing that back here. There we go, no more reaction. You see the tail swish while I work on it? I definitely try to tell you. No problem. Good job, buddy. All right, he's all done. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I see you on TV. You have? So what's yes. your name? Ella. Ella, it's nice to meet you. And who do we have here? My Frosty and my mom. 
your mom and Frosty. He's a special horse. Yes. And you love him? Yes. Well, we don't really know his full story. He was at the auction, the slaughter auction, and um, we saw him, we picked him up, we rehabilitated him, we put some good weight on him, and we found these awesome adopters. I mean, just, he couldn't be better adopters for him. So what do you do with Frosty? Ride him and make him go around here running. And yeah, and also Jim, ride him. Gymkhana? You do Gymkhanas? Yes. yes. Oh, that's fun. I used to do a lot of gym pannas. Yes. And I placed third place. Third place? Yes. Wow. That is awesome. Frosty is a family horse. Um, Mom used to have a horse, or well, your grandfather used to have a horse that looked just like him when she was little. So she fell in love with him. And Dad has never ridden before, and he's out riding him and competing in Jim Conn as Aww. well, so it's a, it's a big family affair with Frosty. That is so awesome. Yeah. And what do you do to take care of Frosty? Well, um, we keep him at um, a place, I forgot what's, I don't even know what it's called, called, and they feed him, we feed him extra. Like a boarding stable? Yeah, I think. Okay. And we ride him around there, and he's a really good boy. When I seen him, I was like, it took me about a week. I kept going back and forth, and I'm like, I'm just gonna do it. And he has been amazing. He's like, I could cry thinking about it. Like, he's like freedom. He's like, he's everything we could have wanted in a horse. So we're, we're going to multiple different organizations. There's a $15,000 grant on the line and six months of mentoring. And we have to choose one organization for the $15,000. Why should we choose Wendy and for the love of the hoof? I think, she has such a big heart for the horses. She takes care of them. She, and not that she just like gives off the horses and that's it. I mean, I talk to her daily. She's like family now. Um, anytime I have a question, I can ask her and she helps. I mean, it's, it's a big thing because we're new to it really again. So, I mean, we're learning with him and uh, she's great. She's helped us a lot. I think, I think she deserves it. I think, Everything she does here is great. Well, thank you so much for bringing Frosty out here so we can yeah. see him. It really means a lot, and you keep doing what you can to help horses, okay? Okay. He's wow. a good boy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Gosh, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> give me a hug. Thank you. Well, for sure. I give you a hug. Aw, thank you so much for giving him such a good home. I decided that becoming a nonprofit was the best way to be able to help more horses because you have to be able to have grants and, and things like that and you can't do that without being a nonprofit. Horse Plus is the only organization that's actually given us grants. Our donations is our biggest challenge um, and it's just strictly because I don't have the know-how on how to be able to do it. Um, I'm hoping that with some mentoring that I will be able to succeed in that. Our donations are far and few in between. Um, once in a while we'll get um, some person that will go ahead and give us a donation. Um, our vet has actually given us a great donation last year to be able to keep going. He sees that we, we struggle daily on it and he wants to make sure that we continue our mission. So he was able to support us last year in some of our donations. Hey guys. Hey. Sweetheart's all ready for the vet. Do you want to awesome. go and see her? Yeah, sure. okay. awesome. I'd love to meet your vet. I've been okay. through the whole day. I'm like, oh, what's the vet doing over there? And uh, he's got an amazing setup. I thank haven't you. seen another equine mobile dentist that had quite the same setup. Great, thank you. He's a wonderful man. You're going to love him. His name is Dr. Fisher. Hey, Dr. Fisher. Hi, Wendy. How are you doing today? Good, thanks. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is Tony nice and to Jason. Meet you. Hi, Tony. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Dr. Hi, Fisher. Jason. Pleasure. This is an amazing setup. Well, thanks. I, yeah. I've, I heard that horses were going to get their teeth floated, and then I saw you pull in, and I was like, wow, that's, <laughs> that's amazing uh, equipment you have there. And then we've been filming all over the place, and I, was, I kept wanting to get back here to see your setup and how it works, because this is amazing. Yeah, it does make it easier and safer for, for the horse and me. About 12 years ago, I wanted to get back into horse dentistry after small animal emergency work and 
I researched how to safely do that. And since I'm an old geezer, I wanted to be able to do it without being jerked off my feet like I was when I was a young man. And I found this online, a picture of this by a vet in Oklahoma who said it made dentals fun for him. It's made by Dr. Stubbs out of Texas. He has since died. He made 80 of these stocks. I modified mine to make it comfortable for the way I do dentals, but he's a genius. And did you order this no, or a custom Dr. made? Dr. Stubbs from Texas made I, 80 of these. 80 of them, and you he, got one He of died them. three years ago, oh. and no one is making them now. Wow. Most of the vets that had them in dentists are in the Texas and Oklahoma area. Well, this is an amazing piece of equipment, safe for the horses and safe yeah, for you. Yeah, it makes dentistry fun. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. So we're gonna have Sweetheart come today and she's a Mustang, uh, she's halter broke, um, but she doesn't ride and she doesn't pick up her feet that well. And she's really afraid of needles. So oh boy. <laughs> Dr. Well. Fisher has a special tool to help her out. Brandy, could you rub some lavender underneath her nose? I found that this really helps calm the horses down. I know, love. I know, sweetheart. You just take it easy. She doesn't like her nose messed with, but she doesn't like needles either, so we need her to calm down. So just take a look at that contraption. <laughs> Yeah, so we gave her lavender uh, to calm her down. That takes four or five minutes. And then I try to stay as relaxed as I can and let her get over her fear of this and let her figure out that it's okay. She's so curious and smart. <laughs> she wants to get in. I use two ropes because if she gets free of one or if one halter breaks, then I have another way to catch her so she doesn't go galloping off. Wow, you did great. <laughs> you did wonderful, sweetheart. Okay, turn around, love. Let's, we're gonna do this four or five times and that will prepare her for when the gates are closed, when it's more claustrophobic. And so beautiful. I know. Some horses reaction is to try to go up and over the front gate and the strap and also this lead rope around the cleat here, keep her from hurting herself by going over and flipping. Now she doesn't like needles. I'm gonna try it once without using that sugar string. She's come around so much since the last time I did her with the care she's gotten here that she might tolerate it well. She's much more trusting. Steady. Now, now, don't do that. I'm a fragile old guy. One of the big dangers is when they're moving like this, that the needle can go through the jugular vein into the carotid artery, in which case the drugs go straight to the brain, which is rarely fatal, but it's always scary because they'll seizure, go into convulsions that look like they're about to die. Yeah, she's starting to get zonked. All right, love. But she's so strong that we're gonna have to go the full dose, even though she acts pretty sedate. She could lift me off my feet. So here's the jugular right here. It bulges up when I press there. And now that she's not fighting so much, you can see that it's, it's quite, visible but that's the full dose and and these are 
firefighter rope systems. It's a prussic minding pulleys. So as you pull down here, the pulley pushes up on that prussic knot and it locks it. And it makes it much easier to lift the head up and then to drop the head, you just touch the top of that prussic and it drops down. It's really cool. <laughs> okay, so now we're looking at our front teeth and we're checking how much sideways movement we have. I'm also going to check and see if she has pain here in the temporomandibular joint area and any overgrown muscles or uneven muscle mass here. You're pretty out of it. And the next step is to check the angle of her incisors in two different directions. This device checks the angle this way and it, these bars also let you know if there's a twist this way, you know, like that. Sometimes there's a slanted mouth with a severe twist like that. She does not have that, but she has a very shallow, flat angle. This, this angle should be more like this. Their angles are wrong. Uh, they're not touching properly. We can easily correct that trying to get them back to where they would be as if she were grazing on harsh graze in the wild. Well, sweetheart did great. She had magnificent teeth and they corrected well. She's good for another year. Yeah. I can say that was impressive. Oh, like, thanks. <laughs> I've seen a lot of different horses floated over the last, you know, all, I guess all my life I've been around horses, but that was the most impressive float job I've ever oh. seen. Well, thanks very much. That's amazing. Your whole yeah. setup, everything, I'm just <laughs> in awe. <laughs> Good. <laughs>
thank you guys for showing that to me. That's, that's quite the process you have going on here. I can see it's gonna take hundreds, if not thousands of man hours to get this done. Oh yeah, it's amazing, you know, people drop it off in the shape they leave it and when they go to pick it up, they don't even recognize what it looks like. So do you guys send them pictures and let them know what it's looking like on the way? Actually, you know, I, I have sent them a picture in the past, but basically it looks worse after I get it before it looks better. So I'll send them in a picture of the worst shape it could have possibly have been in, you know, and it's all stripped and everything. And that's the last one they see until they see their trailer again. And I do it because I just like the wow factor when they come in and they just drop a jaw when they see their trailer and it's, it's just satisfying, gratifying whenever they do that. Never had a problem with the client yet. Well, I, I really uh, applaud you guys for doing this work. There's never a dull moment around here. Yep, I believe it. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you guys. Oh, thank you. I think why we deserve the $15,000, uh, I don't know if we deserve it more than anybody else does, but one thing I can say is that uh, the money that we get for this, this fifteen thousand dollars, if we did get that, a hundred percent of it's going to go into what we need to do here in this operation, one hundred percent, and that's what it's going to be used for. And we need it to be able to get things and just better what we have here, and you know, move forward, get it to where we can get more horses if we got a bigger trailer, things like that. You know, that's what we're looking to do. She is really very, very dedicated to what she does, and uh, these horses, you know, this, that's her life. That's our life, really. Is what it is, and. She, you, she couldn't be a better person, or anybody could be a better person, I think, than what she does. I love her to death. <laughs> well, today has been awesome. Uh, it was really neat to see so many different parts of your organization. You know, you had a lot going on today. I was like, we're over here, we're over here. Like, felt like we were all over the place, but it was really neat to see your organization in action. And I mean, as you know, you're, you're applying for this mentoring and grant, and you know, you, historically we've gone to you know, like one or two different organizations, we, we pick one. And this year, there was a lot of debate going on on how we were going to, to do it. But we had over 30 applicants. Yeah. And that's a lot that's of a organizations lot. Yeah, to choose from. And, and every one of them was so worthy. Heartbreaking and stories. All, oh, I bet. And all to, need the help. to try to go through them all, I was like, well, this one's amazing and that one's amazing. Well, we have to do this one. And it, it was really, really, a difficult thing but we did choose your organization to be in the top four um, because you are an amazing organization and we have we've been supporting you with the auction rescue grants for a while and um, you know the the um, grant manager she's like this place is amazing last year oh, thank you <laughs> and so when you submitted it, I was like oh wow they're really good but there are so many applications um, but we, we do want to let you know that we are going to give you the six months of mentoring. Oh, really? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Huh? That's the beat. And you're still in the running for the $15,000 oh, grant. Yes. So, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. So much. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate yeah. it. Oh, Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. If you're willing to hug, I'll give you a hug. All right, that works. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank